Begin by removing the splash shield by first removing the four 8mm bolts along the front edge as indicated by the green arrows. Next, remove the six 8mm bolts on the front of each wheel well, green arrows. Note the passenger side wheel well shown here. The driver's side is similar. Once all the bolts are removed, carefully lower and remove the front splash shield. Next, locate the red drain plug on the front driver's side of the engine as indicated by the green arrow. This is the drain plug for the radiator. Place a large drain pan of at least 5 gallon capacity underneath. It also helps to loosen and remove the cap on the coolant expansion tank. Loosen and remove the radiator drain plug and allow all the coolant to drain from both the radiator and the engine. It may take a while before all the coolant has drained from the engine. Also remove the air box from the left side of the engine bay. Now crawl under the front of the car and locate the bottom hose connection on the right passenger side of the car. You'll see a metal hose connection that has a rubber hose. The rubber hose connects to the radiator from the coolant expansion tank, green arrow. The metal connection, purple arrow, is the connection going to the transmission fluid cooler built into the radiator. Use a 19 mm wrench to loosen and remove this fitting. Keep in mind that you will have some transmission fluid drain out, so use a drain pan underneath. Once removed, loosen the hose clamp holding the rubber hose to the flange on the radiator and remove the hose. Now look towards the center of the radiator. You'll see the other connection for the transmission fluid cooler, green arrow. Like before, use a 19 mm open-ended wrench to loosen and remove the fitting. You will also want to hold the other side of the fitting with another 19 mm wrench to prevent any twisting of the line. Now climb out from under the car and remove the two plastic pins holding the outer fan grill in place as indicated by the green arrows. Use a screwdriver to pry them up and out of the radiator support panel. Pull the plastic outer fan grill out and set it aside. Now locate the five 10 mm bolts holding the upper portion of the radiator support frame to the car, green arrows. Also pry out the two large spring clips holding the radiator frame to the support panel, purple arrow. Lift the upper radiator support frame up and turn it over. On the inside, you'll see two plastic clips that hold the hood release cable to the panel, green arrows. Pop the cable out and set the upper frame aside. Remove the two 10 mm bolts holding the top of the fan assembly to the AC condenser, green arrows. Remove the 13 mm bolt holding the horn to the bracket, green arrow, and unplug the electrical connections. Pry the plastic cover off the fan shroud at the upper right corner of the fan assembly. Underneath you'll see both the service port for the air conditioning and the electrical connection for the fan motor, green arrow. Squeeze the connector to release it from the fan assembly. Now lift the whole fan assembly out of the front of the car. Remove the two 10 mm bolts holding the AC condenser to the radiator, green arrows. Also remove the two smaller metal clips that hold the top of the radiator fan shroud to the radiator frame, purple arrows. Now loosen and remove the hose clamp holding the upper radiator hose to the radiator at the top right, driver's side of the radiator. Remove the hose clamp holding the lower radiator hose to the engine on the driver's side, green arrow. Now carefully remove the fan shroud from the inside of the radiator. Take your time as it is a bit tricky to get it up and over the fan blades. Once the fan shroud is removed, carefully lift the radiator up and out of the front of the car. Now separate the black plastic frame from the AC condenser. You should be able to carefully lower the condenser out from under the car and off to one side. This makes the various components inside the engine bay much easier to access. Remove the three 5mm Allen head screw holding the fan to the fan clutch assembly. Remove the fan belt by placing a 15mm socket on the belt tensioner and turning it clockwise, green arrow. 
This will slacken the belt and allow you to pull it off of the pulleys. If you are reinstalling the belt, mark the rotation direction before removing. Now remove the pulley from the water pump. Use a strap wrench as shown here to keep the pulley from turning as you remove the three 13 millimeter bolts holding it in place. Loosen and remove the two hose clamps holding the water hose going from the water pump to the engine block. Then remove the hose. Now remove the hose clamp holding the lower radiator hose to the water pump and remove the hose, green arrow. Next remove both the 10 millimeter nuts, red arrow, and the 5 millimeter allen head screw, purple arrow, but the screw is obscured by the coolant line. And then pull the metal coolant line out of the water pump. You may find it difficult to remove the allen head screw. Usually the best idea is to have a set of allen head sockets and also a long extension if the bolt is stuck in place. On the top of the old water pump, remove the smaller water hose going to the expansion tank, green arrow. Also remove the large radiator hose going to the top connection of the radiator, red arrow. Then remove the electrical connection going to the temperature sensor, purple arrow. Use a deep 19 millimeter socket to remove the temperature sensor from the water pump as shown here and set the sensor aside. We will be reusing it in the new water pump. Also remove the three 10 millimeter bolts holding the thermostat cover to the water pump, green arrows. Pull the thermostat cover off and remove the thermostat from the water pump. Next, remove the 10 millimeter nut holding the electrical connector to the pump at the rear as shown here. Remove the two long 10 millimeter nuts and bolts that hold the power steering fluid reservoir to the engine and set it aside as shown here. This will give you access to the two lower 6 millimeter bolts holding the pump on, green arrow. Also use a regular 6 millimeter Allen wrench to remove the top bolt, purple arrow. And now the toughest part of the job, removing the top inboard 6 millimeter Allen head bolt that holds the water pump to the block. Unfortunately, this is one of those things that is nearly impossible to take a picture of. In this picture, you can just see the bolt, green arrow. With the limited access you have to remove all of these bolts, it is very, very easy to strip out the inside of a bolt. Our project car had a couple of the bolts already stripped out. And finally, the pump is off. If you've made it this far, congratulations. At this point, you'll want to clean up any coolant you have made spilled into the engine block and also clean the mating surfaces of the new pump to the block. This picture also shows the locations for the mounting bolts more clearly, green arrows. The new water pump will come with three O-rings. Fit the new O-ring to the back of the new pump as shown here. Now fit the new water pump to the engine as shown here using new fasteners. On some water pumps, there is an extra threaded hole cast in the housing to run an additional sensor or fitting. In our case, you'll need to block off the additional hole with the supplied bolt and washer shown here, green arrow. Cut the old O-ring off the metal coolant pipe and fit the new O-ring. It should be supplied with the pump over the flange. Fit the metal coolant pipe to the new water pump and tighten down the 10 millimeter nut that holds it in place, green arrow. Also tighten down the 5 millimeter Allen head bolt that holds the pipe to the front of the engine timing case. Next, reattach the power steering pump and reservoir back onto the mounting bracket. Place the water pump pulley on the flange of the new water pump. Secure it with a strap wrench and refit the three 13 millimeter bolts holding it in place. Tighten them down to around 18 foot pounds each. Fit the larger new O ring over the lip of the thermostat and place the thermostat in the housing as shown. Fit the thermostat cover on the top of the water pump and reinstall the three 10 millimeter bolts, green arrows. Keep in mind that the rearmost bolt also holds the bracket for the electrical connection to the temperature sensor. Thread the temperature sensor into the new water pump, tighten it down, and reconnect the electrical connection, green arrow. 
install the water hose going from the water pump to the engine block, green arrow, as well as the smaller hose going to the coolant overflow tank, purple arrow. Install the lower radiator hose going from the bottom water pump to the fitting on the radiator, green arrow. Install the upper radiator hose going from the top of the water pump fitting to the radiator, green arrow. Reinstall either the old or use a new serpentine belt. Rotate the 15 millimeter bolt on the belt tensioner, green arrow, clockwise to allow enough room to slip the belt over all of the pulleys in the orientation shown here. Now place the plastic fan over the fan clutch and reinstall the three 5 millimeter screws that hold it in place, green arrows. You're now ready to reinstall the AC condenser back into the engine compartment. Carefully lift the condenser into place in front of the motor. Fit the plastic air duct over the front of the condenser. Once in position, place the radiator back into the engine bay. Here's where it gets a little tricky. At the bottom of the condenser, radiator, and air duct are two plastic pins that fit into slots molded into the rubber mounts that sit on the radiator frame. This picture shows the bottom of the mounts with the radiator, condenser, and duct installed. The pins for the radiator fit into the slots of the feet illustrated by the green arrow. The pins for the condenser fit into the slot illustrated by the purple arrow, while the duct pins fit into the slot illustrated by the yellow arrow. It's a bit confusing and takes some time to get everything lined up. Now reconnect the 19 millimeter fitting going to the transmission fluid cooler in the radiator on the left side, purple arrow, and also the hose going to the coolant expansion tank, green arrow. Also reconnect the other transmission cooler fitting in the center of the radiator, green arrow. Reconnect the upper radiator hose. Reconnect the lower radiator hose, green arrow. From this point, the rest is the reverse of removal, and don't forget to top up and bleed your coolant. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.